Hi everyone, so it's a while since I've done an organic mechanisms question, so I thought I'd come back to it. So this one is number 21. The mechanism that features in the question is electrophilic addition, but there's lots of other bits included as well. I'm going to do this one slightly differently, so the link to the question is in the description of the video. So if you just click on that, have a go at the question, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so the question starts with a couple of definitions, sigma bond and pi bond. So a sigma bond involves the direct or end-to-end -end overlap between two orbitals. And a pi bond involves the side-to-side -side overlap between two p orbitals. Moving on to the next part, so I've drawn up the displayed formula for the buta-1,3-diene molecule. So we'll just have a look at the types of bonds we've got. So all the single bonds essentially are sigma bonds. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But we've also got a sigma bond in each of the double bonds. So there's nine sigma bonds altogether. And as well as the sigma bond in the double bond, we've also got a pi bond. So we've got two of those. Moving on to part B now. So this is the first of the mechanisms in the question. We've got to draw the mechanism for the formation of the major organic product. So the first thing obviously we've got to do is appreciate there's a dipole across this bond. Bromine's more electronegative than hydrogen, so it's delta plus on the hydrogen, delta minus on the bromine. We draw a curly arrow from the middle of the double bond onto the slightly positive hydrogen and we break this bond between the hydrogen and the bromine shown like that with that curly arrow. Remember we've got to draw the formation of the major organic product so that involves this carbocation. I'll explain why it's this one in the next part of the question but basically this hydrogen had a choice could either go there or there. The major product forms when the hydrogen goes here. Remember, that's explained in the next part of the question. The bromine becomes a bromide ion. Normally show a pair of electrons on there because we're going to take the curly arrow from the lone pair to that carbon with the positive charge. And obviously, that's going to form a covalent bond between the carbon and the bromine, which gives us this product here. So moving on to the explanation of why this major product forms, I've now got the original carbocation, the one we saw in the previous uh, slide, but this is the other one that could have formed. So if we think about the type of carbocations we've got, the one that the major product forms from is a secondary carbocation because it's got two carbon groups bonded to the C with the plus charge. This one here has only got one carbon group bonded directly to the C plus, so this is a primary carbocation. Secondary carbocations are more stable than um, primary ones and so the major product forms from the more stable secondary carbocation. Uh, moving on to the last part of B, how many saturated organic products could be present in this mixture when buta-1,3-diene reacts with an excess of hydrogen bromide? Well, it's going to react with two moles of HBr, because it's got two CC double bonds. So we just think about where the bromines could add. So you could have both bromines here and here, so at each end, that would lead to that product there. You could have the bromines going here and here, which would lead to that one there. You could have a bromine on the very end on the left and on this one here. So the answer was obviously three. Moving on to part C, so we've just got to give the definition for the term stereoisomerism. So that's when you've got molecules with the same structural formula but with different spatial arrangements of atoms or groups. And the next part, is the student correct or incorrect with these two being stereoisomers? Well, the student's incorrect because this sigma bond in the middle here can rotate. So basically, if that spun round, you'd get that. And finally, the unfamiliar Diels Alder reaction now. We've got some information about the reaction between buta 13 diene and ethene, and it's making cyclohexene. So we've just got to think about the curly arrows in this mechanism here. So if we look at what's happened, they've told us a pair of electrons have gone from the carbon carbon double bond and gone to here between these two carbons. So that's why we've gone from a double bond there to a single bond there and we've got this new 
carbon carbon single bond so then what must else have happened so this this double bond's gone now it's gone up to there so a pair of electrons must have jumped up to here and then we've gone from a double bond here to a new bond there so that must have happened there so for the next part all we need to do is apply that to these molecules here so very very similar we're going to have that's going to go like that that's going to go like that and that's going to go like that which will lead to that molecule there and for the last one we've got an alkyne here so this is a cc triple bond and then another ch3 there and a ch3 there but same sort of thing pair of electrons jump out to there so obviously that's going to create a, a single bond here and that jumps up to there and that jumps up to there so that means as well as getting this double bond here which we got before we've got a double bond on this side because we started with a triple and we've lost a pair of electrons so there's still enough electrons there for the double bond and obviously those methyl groups here and here are just going to stick off these two carbons